Links are what make the web the web. The whole idea behind HTML hypertext is that it allows us to link from one page to another or even to different parts of a page. Just like paragraphs, headings, and lists, links have a tag. The name does not make sense at first glance. You would probably assume it should be a link tag, but it's actually an A tag. A stands for anchor. Remember that the web initially was used by scientists, so the name anchor comes from back in the day when you had long scientific pages with a table of contents and you could click on a section and get down to the information that is relevant to that specific topic. Anchored links were created throughout the page and when you clicked the link or the table of contents, it would anchor you down to that lower location on the page. We use it a little bit differently now. Commonly, nowadays, links are used to link to other pages, other websites, sections of a page, files, email addresses, and even telephone numbers. Throughout this course, we will look at the various ways to make links, but for now, we'll be working with links to other websites and email links. We use the A tag, and by itself, it doesn't do anything. We have to use attributes to give it the functionality that makes it work. The most important attribute for links is the href attribute, which stands for hypertext reference. Let's take a look at how this works on an actual page. Here I have a very short snippet of code and you can see that I have a paragraph and what we want to do is we want to make this bit of text a link that links out to the w3.org's website. In this comment right here, I've gone ahead and pasted the actual link. It's important to know that when you make an absolute link, that's a link that links away from your website to somewhere else out on the web, it always needs to start with the appropriate protocol. This would commonly be HTTPS or HTTP. This part of the URL is necessary. So normally you might just type w3.org to get to this web page, but when we make a link in our web site, we need to make sure that we include the beginning part of the link. So I did want to point that out because it is an important caveat. Let's go ahead and let's set up the link. I'll start by opening my A tag. I'm just going to make the closing angle bracket and then I'll close the A tag. Now, when I just make the A tag, nothing changes on our page. So this is the anchored link. But like I mentioned before, without the href attribute, this is useless. It doesn't actually change the page in any sort of way. So what we'll do is we'll add our href attribute. And inside the quotes, we're going to put the link to that other page. I'm going to go ahead and paste in the link. I don't need to do anything else. You can see that now the text has changed. When you first set up your link, the link will display as being underlined and displaying as blue. This is an indication that it is a link on your web page and it has not yet been visited. When we visit a website, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this link. The page is going to switch and take you to whatever the linked website is. So at this point, I need to go back and I'm going to go ahead and just right click and click back. We're using something called frames in CodePen, so we actually have to click in the pane and go back. It's a little bit different than if we were using a actual website, but we'll just work with what we have for right now. And now you can see that the link is still underlined, but it appears as purple. I also want to mention that when you're physically clicking your mouse down on the link, so my mouse is currently pressed down, the link will appear as red. These different colors are the intended way that the links appear in the browser. Unvisited links are blue, visited links are purple, and active links are red. This is meant to help people understand if they visited a web page or not. Using CSS, we can completely customize these colors, but this is what all the browsers will use by default. If you do see your links appearing in different colors, it just is an indication if you visited that link or not. I do want to share a couple other things in regards to links with you. I'm going to get rid of this comment 
And what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that when we click our link, it doesn't just replace the page that we were looking at. Normally, when you create absolute links, you probably want the link to open up in a new tab. To do that, we're going to add an additional attribute to our A tag. So inside the A tag, I'm going to add the target attribute and I will make the attribute value underscore blank. If we go ahead and try our link now, when I click the link, you'll see that a new separate tab opens in my browser and the page is loaded. This is advantageous when you are linking out to other websites because you are not having your user navigate away from your website. Your website still remains open in its own unique tab. Normally, if you're making links within your own website, you don't use the target equals underscore blank. But if you are making links that link to another website, the absolute link, then you normally will use this target underscore blank to ensure that the page opens in a separate tab. So now you know how to make links. We have focused on creating absolute links and you know now how you can force a link to open in a separate tab.